If your goal is to read the news in English, then it's very important to understand the language of newspaper headlines. A headline is the title of a news article, and it's often the most difficult part for English learners. This is because journalists use a very distinct style that's designed to be short and attract your attention. This means that many headlines don't use complete sentences or follow standard grammar rules. But don't worry, because in today's lesson, we're going to analyze the advanced grammar and vocabulary in the titles of articles from various news companies. We'll practice together by rewriting each headline in the form of a complete sentence so you can compare this style to normal speaking and writing. Also, I've created a free PDF with all of today's notes. You can find the link in the description below. Let's get started. My first tip for you is that headlines are typically written in the historical present tense. This means that they use simple present tense to describe recent past events. This makes the event sound more interesting or urgent. Let's look at some recent examples in the news. Hurricane Debbie makes landfall in Florida. Landfall is a noun that you often see in literature. It's the land that you first see after a long journey by sea or air. So the collocation to make landfall means to arrive on land. So how would we typically say or write this? Well, we would use the present perfect or simple past tense. Hurricane Debbie has made landfall or made landfall in Florida. Intel axes 15,000 jobs after sales tumble. An axe is a tool used to cut down trees. But if a company axes jobs, it means the company suddenly dismisses employees to reduce costs. To tumble usually means to fall down very quickly, usually by rolling. But in this context, tumble means that the amount or the value goes down quickly. In standard spoken and written English, the complete sentence would be, Intel has axed 15,000 jobs after sales tumbled. Tip number two, headlines use infinitives to describe future plans or events. Remember that an infinitive is to plus the base form of a verb, to run, to decide, to consider, etc. Johnny Cash to become first musician with statue at American Capitol. Each state in the U.S. has two historical statues in the Capitol building. Notice that Capitol and Capitol are two different words with the same pronunciation. The Capitol building is located in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is the capital city of the United States. Now, let's make a complete sentence. Johnny Cash will become the first musician with a statue at the American Capitol. This brings me to another very important tip. Headlines usually omit articles like a uh, and the. However, articles are necessary in standard speaking and writing. Remember this rule. You always need something before a singular count noun. This can be an article like the first musician or a statue or a determiner like my sister, this book, and every city. Here's our next headline. Squid Game to end after three seasons. Season 2 release date and teaser finally revealed. As a verb, to release means to make something available to the public. Here, release is a noun that functions as an adjective. What kind of date? A release date, or the date that a product is available. 
A teaser is a short advertisement for something that will be available later. Usually, a teaser gives you a little taste of what something will be like before the full version is released. And to reveal something means to show something that was previously secret or unknown. There are a few different options for a complete sentence, but I would say something like this Squid Game will end after three seasons. The release date and teaser for season two. Have finally been revealed. Notice that we're using the passive voice. The helping verb be plus the past participle form of the verb, revealed. This becomes have been revealed in the present perfect tense. But wait, where are the helping verbs have and be in the headline? Well, let's talk about that next. Tip number four. Headlines usually omit helping verbs, also called auxiliary verbs. This includes verbs like be, have, and modal verbs like can or should. Earlier, I told you that headlines use the simple present tense to describe recent past events. When this happens, you know that the verb is using the active voice. However, if you're reading a headline and you see the past participle form of a verb with no helping verb, then it's probably a verb in the passive voice. This can be a regular past participle like delivered or revealed, or it can be irregular like made and chosen. Miss USA, Alma Cooper. Crowned amid controversial pageant year. Here, Miss USA is wearing a crown. That's a noun. In this context, to crown is a verb that means to officially give someone a title for winning a competition. It's very common to see this verb in the passive voice because we don't know or care about who exactly put the crown on her head. We want to focus on the result and who received the action. So she was crowned in simple past tense, or she has been crowned in present perfect tense. Here we have a preposition that's very common in news reports and literature, but you almost never hear this in everyday conversation. Amid. Amid means during something or in the middle of something. Especially something that causes a lot of excitement or confusion. A pageant is a competition for young women to show their beauty, skills, and personal qualities. And unfortunately, only one winner is chosen. Let's rewrite this as a complete sentence Miss USA, Alma Cooper, has been crowned amid a controversial pageant year. Next, Thousands evacuated as extremely aggressive wildfire burns in eastern Canada. The verb evacuate means to move someone from a dangerous place to a safer place because of an emergency. We usually use the adjective aggressive to describe a person who behaves in a very angry way, like if you want to fight or attack someone. But in this context, an aggressive fire is a fire that grows quickly and is difficult to manage. A wildfire is a fire in a place like a forest that is not controlled and can spread to a larger area. Pay attention to these punctuation marks because they indicate direct speech or reported speech. These are called quotation marks. You put one at the beginning and one at the end of a word or a phrase to report the exact words that someone said. Most news organizations use single quotation marks in direct speech in headlines. However, in the paragraphs of the article, you will see double quotation marks. So, what's our complete sentence? Thousands of people. Have been evacuated as an extremely aggressive wildfire burns in eastern Canada. 
headlines also omit be when it's a linking verb before an adjective. Ephron, happy and healthy after swimming incident. An incident is an event that is unusual, serious, or unpleasant. We mainly say there was an incident in formal situations. However, in everyday English, it's more common to say that something happened. Notice the single quotation marks again. This means that the words happy and healthy were spoken by Zac Efron himself. Let's make a complete sentence. Efron said he is happy and healthy after a swimming incident. One of the most confusing things about headlines is when they put multiple nouns into a single phrase. These phrases can be difficult to break down because they require a deep understanding of how the nouns relate to one another. Some nouns function as an adjective to describe another noun. Let's look at another example of a headline with a complex noun phrase. Nike sees gold rush with Summer Olympics-driven website visits sales. Yes, in English, this brand is pronounced with two syllables, Nike. All right, I'm not a history teacher, but this term requires a quick U.S. history lesson. A gold rush is a situation when a lot of people suddenly go to a place where gold has recently been discovered. The first major gold rush in North America began when gold was discovered in California in the year 1848. As a result, tens of thousands of people moved to California, hoping to become rich. In the context of this article, Nike experienced a gold rush. They've been very popular recently, so a lot of companies want to invest, and a lot of people want to purchase Nike products. Here's another very useful word, driven, which is the past participle verb form. Drive, drove, driven. Now, another meaning of drive is to influence, motivate, or cause something to progress. You drive someone to do something. The Summer Olympics drove many people to visit Nike's website and purchase something. It's also very common to use the passive voice here. What were sales driven by? Meaning, what influenced sales? Nike sales were driven by the Olympics. Or, as an adjective, Nike sales were Olympics-driven. In the world of economics, it's very common to use this word as a compound adjective. For example, the company's decisions are cost-driven. This means that the cost of something has the biggest influence on their decisions. Some other common collocations are product-driven, export-driven, and consumer-driven. Now, the problem in this headline is that we have this complex noun phrase, Summer Olympics Driven Website Visits. In order to break it down, I recommend starting with the noun on the right. What kind of visits? Website visits. That were driven by what? The Summer Olympics. The last thing I want to mention here is that there's a comma between visits and sales. This is because headlines usually replace conjunctions like and with a comma. So finally, let's put this all together and make a full sentence. Nike has seen a gold rush with website visits and sales that were driven by the Summer Olympics. Phew. All right, I have one more example for you. And this news article is about something that recently happened in my hometown. Cars flipped, buildings damaged after tornado takes Buffalo by surprise. Again, we're replacing the word and with a comma to separate two clauses with verbs in the passive voice. 
The verb flip means to make an object go up in the air and turn over, like when you flip pancakes. Here's a great collocation to take someone by surprise. This means to happen unexpectedly in a surprising way. For example, the team's victory really took us by surprise. Okay, now here's your homework. I want you to change this headline to a complete sentence with correct grammar for speaking and writing. Make sure that you use the correct verb tenses, articles, and add or remove any punctuation as necessary. Type your answers in the comments. Thank you so much to my Patreon members and my YouTube channel members for your support. And thank you for watching this lesson. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed it. I'm Gina, this is Your World in English, and I'll see you next time. Bye!